Just gonna wait for everybody to come in and then we will get started. Let's try and see if we can. Um, yeah, I hope you guys have seen the ingredient list. Uh, we need flour, we need cardamom, we need coconut milk, I was going to say coconut water. We need yeast. And just on a side note, I've like got a new packet of yeast that I've never tried. So, uh, if it flops, it's flopping with this one. And then you need sugar. I've got about eight tablespoons. As I'm doing this, I'm going to even, actually I'll take some notes and do some weights, because a lot of people have asked me for the weights for my Mahamri recipe. I'm using a 250 ml cup, so just measuring. When you're measuring flour out, you don't want to pack it tightly, yeah? So when somebody says one cup, try and keep it at that. Don't pack it too tightly. I'll obviously update my recipe on my site to include the, the weight. So one, two, and... So we've got three cups of flour there, which is about 386 grams. So, six grams of flour. Okay. All right. I feel like I'm Kenyumbani right now. Okay, let's put that aside. Let's put that aside entirely. Create some space in the studio. Okay, so we've got our three cups of flour. To that I will add my sugar, okay? And I usually use a tablespoon, which is about 15 milliliters, but again, let's check the weight, because truly that is the best way to do this. So one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, and about eight. So I'll say about 120 grams. Okay, there we go. So we've got our flour and we've got our sugar. Just to recap, it's 386 grams of flour, all-purpose flour. No, please don't use the flour that has baking powder in it because we're not making mandazi. Mandazi is very thick, very dense. That's not what we're making. We're making the ones, you know, the ones that have a hole inside? That's what we're making today, which is the mahambri. And then, uh, yeah, so 386 grams of all-purpose flour and 120 grams of sugar, okay? I have used raw sugar, that's the color, but you can easily use any sugar that you have on hand. Fire. Dwe delay. delay, I'm to see and delay. Okay, so like I said earlier, I have got this brand new yeast that I've never tried before. And because it's quarantine time, you take what you can get. I'm just blessed that I could find such a big thing of yeast. Okay, again, let's see if I can measure this out for you. Mm. So I'm using about a teaspoon. You don't want too much of this, huh? So about two grams. Now, um, I have some iliki here. I'll just show you quickly. Let me just put the chat off so I can see. So that's the iliki. And for those of you who don't know how to use fresh iliki, I prefer fresh over the powdered any day. So you just want to open that up. And you can see the little seeds inside, the black seeds. That's what you're going to be using. So I've got about five, I'd say five, six in here. So you just want to pound it up into a powder. If you have the iliki powder or the cardamom powder, absolutely okay. You can use that as well. So don't stop here because uh, see, I don't have the iliki. Just keep going. Or if you don't want to use it, you can use vanilla as well. That's a different thing you can add. So let's just ponda ponda. Okay, so once you're happy with the consistency, it should be a fine powder. Show you quickly, like so. We can now get a bowl back, our bowl back, and just tilt everything in there. Okay, <laughs> you need some muscles in your hands for this bowl. This thing is 
solid. I can actually do this. This is how I stay fit in the kitchen. When you all are not watching, I'm just doing exercise. Hi. Put that aside as well. Just use my moving back and forth. I'm filming in the, the studio kitchen and there's not much space in here. Okay, so we've added our sugar, we've added our yeast, we've added our flour. I'm just going to get a spoon and just kind of mix this up a bit. Make sure everything is well mixed. I don't add salt to this. And a lot of you asked in my on my Instagram platform why I don't add salt in the beginning to my bread. Salt stops the yeast from working. So if you're going to put salt immediately when you're adding yeast, there's a high chance it's not going to work. And then you're going to get very frustrated because your yeast is not rising. And... Um, Another point to, to note is, um, <clears throat> sorry, I don't have corona, I'm just joking. <laughs> mm. Okay, another point to note, yeast is a living thing, okay? And yeast needs to be fed. If you're going to make something like uh, vitumbua, for example, I like to add sugar at the end of my vitumbua because if you overfeed the yeast, it dies. If you add salt, it dies. So it's a bit iffy, but once you get the basis of it, you'll have no trouble working with yeast. And I like to work with instant yeast because it's a lot easier. All right. Next. Coconut. Now, I prefer to make my own coconut milk with desiccated coconut. That's the dried coconut that you can buy. And the simple way of doing this is I like to blend it. And then I'll just grab one of these. You know, we have these when you buy onions or you buy potatoes, they sell these sacks. Don't throw these sacks away. They are so good. They're so strong. And they're very good for kamoing. Like, you know, if you need to squeeze juices out of stuff. Um, so I normally just blend my coconut, desiccated coconut with water. I add it in here and then I squeeze everything out. And you're left with this. We have the lighter tui here. And we have the thicker tui here. So tui in zito equal you. Okay, the thicker tui, the thicker coconut is up, the light one is down. Pretty fun fact. And I do have a video on how to make coconut milks on my YouTube channel. Just look for three nut milks there, you will see. All right. Um, some people like to use light coconut milk and then heavy coconut milk for this. I just do this and I just dump it. End of story. Okay. Let's go to the chemistry lab now. Ooh. Fun fact. I used to work in a hospital. In another life. So anyway, <laughs> back to this. Let me put my gloves on. I definitely did not think I'd be using my gloves for this. Or using them ever again for that matter. Thanks to Corona and thanks to everything. I'm using these again. Now, how much we're going to use? <laughs> I need to measure this exact for you guys. I think we'll use the weighing scale again. Because sitaki kutukanwa tena, nimechoka na kutukanwa. I'm tired of people coming to my page and abusing me for imperfections here and there. I'm working alone, you guys. Uh, what cup can I use for you? Hold on. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just going to grab the same cup just for demonstration purposes. So again, 250 ml. So I'm going to start with that. So I'm going to start with a cup. That's essentially what you start with, okay? One cup, and you just bring, that's about 196. So 196 grams, okay? Another fun fact, I was born a left-handed. I evolved into a righty thanks to my Kenyan schooling. I don't know which of you used to be beaten with a ruler on the back of your hands when you wrote with your left hand. I was, so I had to convert. Anyway, just a few fun facts to keep us busy and how your, your goods come out. So I'm adding another half a cup again. Let us just measure. <laughs> Thank you for being patient with me here. So I'm just going to add a touch. I'd say that's about two tablespoons I've added, which is not really need that much 
I see it's starting to leave the sides, which is a good sign. Thank you, my darling. It's okay. I'm going to take a little flower just to lightly dust. Working with your with gloves is also another. I don't like working with gloves at this point because I can't really feel it properly. But we don't have any running water in the studio. So just stick to my gloves. Okay, there we go. Now it's coming together, it's leaving the sides. Don't add any more flour past that stage. You just want to keep. This is going to take 15 minutes about. The dough is pretty much where we want it to be. Kaya. Ah, it's nice and smooth now. So I'm just going to bring it together. One way to test to see if you've done it enough is grab a knife or, in my case, some kitchen scissors. Open her up, and you'll see, if you can see that, some air bubbles have formed. Okay, so you'll see some air bubbles, then you know you've kneaded this enough. Okay, got a knife. So I'm just going to section this into four equal parts. My daughter brought me the smallest knife she could pick. <laughs> Please use a bigger knife if you're going to do this. And then quarter it like that. And quarter it like that. Okay, so we've got about four equal sides. And now I'm just going to roll this. What I like to do is I, this is how I like to roll it up. As I'm turning it, I'm pushing it down. As I turn, I push it down. There we go. We got one nice bow. Uh, let's repeat the rest. This is good if you're making your dinner rolls as well. Just keep pushing it down. There we go. Got our second one. And this one's a bit smaller. Ideally, you could measure them out. So, we've got our fourth one. There we go. One, two, three, four. Now I'm going to grab something to put them in. Because I'm doing all four, I'm not going to put them in a bowl, I'm going to put them in the tray. What I like to do is freeze two and then do two, or cook two. I'm just going to line this with some sandwich paper. There we go. Let's figure that timer. Do a light dusting of flour, because you don't want the stuff to, to catch. If you've got greaseproof paper, that's better. We have just run out. So make sure you separate them because they are going to rise. These aside. I hate the cling film that doesn't stretch. It's the most annoying thing ever. The brands of cling film that stretch really well. This one doesn't stretch. Anyway. Okay. So, if you guys have been following me, we should be at the same point by now, hopefully. And I can sit down and read your chats while we wait for this to rise. Let's make sure it's not touching it. Just tuck them in. There we go. Okay, I grab my laptop and sit. Woo. It's sort of kind, of, sort of risen. So in spirits of not keeping you guys here too long, I'm going to try and move on to the next step. So anyway, at this point, seven inches, okay? But one solution is just grab a little flour and your knife. And at this point, you could either cut them into more pieces. I'm just going to do four pieces. So you get about 16 pieces in total.
Now, just make sure when you cut them, you're just separating them a bit. So you don't want them to remarry, rejoin. There shall be no joining during quarantine. You all, make sure your, your pieces are social distancing. Okay, so we have some good social distancing happening here. And another very important thing to note is you need to ensure that if you're not using greaseproof paper, make sure you have enough flour dusted because as they rise the second time, they are bound. Wow, Lily, you are super fast. They are bound to. Um, huh? They're about to stick to this bottom, yeah? So if you're gonna use, you can use newspaper as well. Newspaper works great. But just make sure you're you're adding a little extra flour so they don't they don't shake up. Because the worst thing that can happen is your your um <laughs> your mahamri rise and then they stick on the paper. That's the point that I personally cry. If I'm crying, I know you're crying. Okay. Oh, this paper is so light. I'm just gonna dust the tin instead. These sandwich papers are so, so, so finicky and so light. So I'm just gonna move that into there. And why I'm using something like this is um, when they're having the second rise, or rising the second time, you want to make sure that you're able to kind of cover them so they don't dry out. I don't have a kitchen cloth on hand here, so I'm just gonna use, and I, I, I do like to use kitchen paper sometimes. And this is the heavy duty kind, so. One more. So, and I'm just using regular water. So, I'll just move these guys here a bit, just to try and bring a little order. Obviously I have to scrub this one down later, just for a little order. Okay, and now the cooker got a bit, oops. whoops, the cooker got a bit dirty. Okay, so now I think we can sit down again. Hi. Ah. You know what, I'm just gonna sit on a stool. My little one. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> it's like a store over here. There's my book signing stuff. This was really fun, by the way. Remember that? And then there's other ones in the back for events. And I like using these for photography. So if you're following me for some photography tips, there's one. Whew. My back. <laughs> okay. Let me put this on the table. I have major back issues. So sometimes it's a challenge for me. Okay, I'm literally sitting on a small stool covered in flour. Okay, your comments. Let's see. Ah, I'm catching up. Um, an easy mousse dessert. Uh, would you like a mousse dessert with the egg or without the egg? Because I know how to make both. So if you want to make one without the egg, you just have to whip some cream and then melt some chocolate. And then you take a little cream, put in the chocolate and mix it up. And then fold fold in, gently fold in the rest of the cream and put it in the fridge and call it a day. If you want it with the egg, let me know. It's a bit different. You do egg yolk, melt, like egg yolk, melt some chocolate, mix it. First egg yolk with a little sugar, melted chocolate. You whip the egg white, you whip the cream, and you kind of fold it all together. I find the egg, but you're not cooking the egg, so some people are a bit iffy about that. Uh, good morning, Vanessa. Watching you from Toronto, Canada. Hi. <laughs> I roll with my wine bottle since I never. Ah, yeah, I get a rolling pin, but I mean, I. I've rolled with a wine bottle before. No, kaimati is not hard, sweetheart. It's not. This is the hardest part you find with making kaimati. 
is that the dropping the kaimata into the oil is the hardest part for you. Because, you know, you can put that whole mixture into a piping bag. Actually, not even. If you get the piping bags that are not open, the ones that don't have an opening, make a small opening and then uh, just the dough, making the dough. The dough is really easy to make, honey. It's really easy. Because the dough is now wet. If you've got a mixer, it's even easier. You just put everything in the mixer. Um, but yeah, if you need to pour the dough into the oil, just use a piping bag. Snip off the end of it, and then you can grab some scissors, clean kitchen scissors, and then you just push some of the dough and you cut. As you're pushing, you're cutting the dough into your oil. Okay, there you'll get some perfectly round circles. Cool. At the end. <laughs> I like doing it, it's fun. Oh, my table is too far away. One. Okay, thanks, guys. How are we doing? Once you see them start to stick, by the way, you know that you're, you've moved on. You're ready for the next step. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I think we're just gonna give it a try. Let me bring you closer. I don't know if you're able to see, but there's bubbles that have formed around the wood. Okay, so that means we're good. Right temperature, we're ready for the next step. Back. Okay, so let me just try and put that at a safe distance. Okay, and now hopefully you've um, you put your mahamri really well so it doesn't stick, and you can easily lift it. I'm just gonna plunk one in there. We'll start with one first, just to test that our oil is indeed okay. <laughs> I always say with pancakes. With Hamri, there's always one you sacrifice. <laughs> I don't know why, but at least for me, that's the case. So I like to, as you can see, I'm just pouring the oil on it. I can tell you already the oil isn't 100% where it should be temperature-wise. Otherwise, we would, it would puff up a lot faster. So I'm going to... Increase that a bit. So yeah, I'm just pouring the oil on top. And as you see, as I pour, it starts to swell up. Do you see that? As I'm pouring, it's swelling up. Yeah. And once you get to this point where it's all, like it's swelled up, you need to turn it. If you don't turn it fast enough, it's going to crack. You don't want it to crack. So again, just douse it. Okay, there we go. And when you have more in here, because they're touching each other and stuff, you'll find it rising really easily. So there we go. Okay, perfect. Yay, it worked. I can redeem my spot. <laughs> you know, it would be horrible if this flopped completely. Especially when using new, new brands of flour and stuff, I'm always like, I'm sure. So there we go. The temperature on my cooker is at 240. And that seems to be around what I need. So I'm actually gonna put a note for those ones who need the numbers. Okay, let's flip it over. And this is the part where you get to choose. Some people like theirs very dark. Some people don't like theirs dark. Um, it's again preference, what you prefer. I like it slightly dark. So I got 
Just gonna put the lights on so the lighting light that's too bright. Let me see. I hope it's not too bright. It's getting a little cloudy. It's a little cloudy outside anyway today. I'm just darkening it, in case you're wondering why I'm just chilling over here, letting it chill, just letting it darken a bit, okay? So the next one I'm gonna obviously put more inside because now I've, I've seen that the temperature's pretty much okay. Oh. So always have a slotted spoon like this one and just gently bathe. Gently bathe it with the oil. Just don't be rough and then you're gonna have oil everywhere. Especially when you have an open flame when you're using gas, you don't wanna do that. If you like the mahamri that have like a white line, I'll show you how you do that. You wouldn't, you wouldn't do what I'm doing. You wouldn't bathe it like that. If you're looking for that, because some of them, some people like it dark on top light on the side, so I'm gonna show you how you do that as well. So, down, there we go, that's number one. Just gonna put it on some kitchen paper. Let's just get started with the others. There we go, one. I'm gonna do about, I think I can do two at a time. Kind of moves. So as you're moving them around, they're kind of hitting each other. You can see this one, this one's swelled up. So now you turn it around and keep going. This one's swelled up as well. Turn it around. When you see dots starting to form, then you know you have to reduce your oil a bit. It's too hot. So as soon as you see the dots, you're like, mm -mm. it shouldn't have the dots. So you'll, you'll notice some dark spots on mine because the oil was a little bit too hot. So I've just reduced it slightly to 220. And as they dance in the oil, I call it the, the dance. As they dance, you see, they start to, to fluff up. The most important thing is just make sure that you're not letting it over fluff and then turn because then you get the cracks. And that's what you want to avoid. Oh. So we go. So. And these are great with coconut beans, they're great on their own. I sometimes open mine up and I put an egg inside, like a fried egg, and just make it like a sandwich. It's pretty good as well. I'm just gonna show you this one that's cooled down. I like mine like that. I like when one side has less meat, but there's still meat on one other side. So you're still able to stuff it. Mm. I'm nice and hot and tasty. I'm sorry I can't send you any. So this is how some people like it, color-wise. Yes, yeah, take it. Let's talk, Lily. Careful. So some people like it that color. Almost there. And I can say bye to you. Love you and leave you. Again, you can push them down, the spoon, just as long. Don't just throw them and then leave them and look at them and hope and pray to God that magic happens, huh? Gotta help them a bit. They need movement, they need oil, loving. Come on. All right, here we go. I'll wait for that to do that. I'll be tidying up. 
down there. Just so it's easier for me to lock up and leave the studio. There we go. So you can see there we've got the, because the temperature is now the right temperature, and it's actually at 180 on this side. So you can see you've got the white corners, you've got the brown, and that's what a lot of people love. But yeah, that is, whoa, that is my perfect Mahamri. That's neat. Still a good air pocket for you to figure out. Mm, mojo. <laughs> so I'll sit down, catch up with your comments, and then um, say bye. Oh, um, we turn around. Okay. So let me catch up. I'm just gonna try and read all your comments. Wow, you guys have so many questions. <laughs> okay, all right, where was I? Okay, what brand of cooking pot is that? That is a Le Croiset. Mm, definitely not the cheapest, but you're gonna have this for your, your entire life. You might even pass this on one of those things that you pass it down generation to generation. Uh, yeah, Islanders, I have, I have a lot of um, Fijian friends, Samoan friends, Maori, Maori friends. And yeah, there's a lot of, and they do the Lovo Lovo. Okay. I'm always scratching my head whether to use the oil I've used for frying Mahamri for other food stuff. This oil I've used can actually be reused. What you have to do though, is let it cool down completely and then get some kitchen paper. Isn't it, Lily? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just like I'm eating on camera, I'm horrible. Anyway, get a, what is a kichungi? A sieve. Get a sieve, put it over, you know, whatever container you're gonna be collecting the oil in and then let Mamri is pretty mild, so it doesn't leave like a strong taste or smell. I should be able to fry something else in this one more time. Just don't use dirty cooking oil for your mahamri because that messes your mahamri as well. How many times can one reuse oil? Okay, I'll just answer that. Can you use co a powder coconut? Yes, you can. Just mix it really well. Juakali jerry rig. No, I don't know if jerry rig would work for juakali. Jokali is basically DIY. When you're DIYing something, um, for example, if you're making your own pans at home, as opposed to buying a pan, we would say that's a Jokali pan. And we have in Kenya, you know, you have people like uh, artisan craft, I guess you could say. Um, yeah, what else, what else, what else? <clears throat> Yeah, maximum time for the oil would be three times and don't, mm, yeah, don't reuse it for food, just keep it for frying, but clean it, clean it when you can. Like every time you've, you've cooled your oil, clean it. So I'm impressed with self, been here from the beginning. I'm so grateful, Joanne. I'm so thankful for all of you who have been here from the start. Um, I really appreciate. Um, yeah, I, I really I mean, I, I don't know how to say thank you. I'm Purpose Cultivator. Just send me a message on Instagram in case I don't find you. I don't know if I can save the chat session after. Because like I said, it's the first, not classes, but demonstrations here in Mascot. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> 844 guesswork, yeah. How many Mahamri did it yield? Uh, well, if you follow 
the way you cut the normal way you get 16 mahamri uh we had slightly more because we had some small ones so i think we had, okay um Uh, I wish, I really wish we were somewhere technology wise that I could just like send you guys the food. Okay, so you want another one? Okay, one more. <laughs> um, keep supporting and don't forget one way you can make your culture shine and grow is share your culture with everybody. So be sure to share your culture with all your white friends or all your other friends. Cook for them and um, spread the love. I love you all. Please stay home, stay safe during this time. Uh, I know it's very difficult um, to be away from those you love, but let's keep each other healthy and try and just, like I always say, flatten the curve with corona. And hopefully we can all get back to normalcy. So I'm going to now log off.